heart of Jesus, house of God, and gate of heaven. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, burning furnace of charity. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, abode of justice and love. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, full of goodness and love. Have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, abyss of all virtues, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, most worthy of all praise, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, King and center of all hearts, have mercy on Heart of Jesus, in whom are all treasures of wisdom and knowledge, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom dwells the fullness of divinity, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, in whom the Father was well pleased, have mercy on Heart of Jesus, of whose fullness we have all received, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, desire of the everlasting hills, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, patient and most merciful, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, enriching all who invoke thee, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, fountain of life and holiness, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, propitiation for our sins, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, filled with reproaches, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, bruised for our offenses, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, obedient unto death, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, pierced with a lance, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, source of all consolation, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, our life and our resurrection, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, our peace and our reconciliation, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, victim for our sins, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, salvation of those who trust in thee, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, hope of those who die in thee, have mercy on us. Heart of Jesus, delight of all the saints, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, save us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, graciously give us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make our hearts like to die. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, look upon the heart of thy most beloved Son and upon the praises and satisfaction which he offers thee in the name of sinners. And to those who implore thy mercy in thy great goodness, Grant forgiveness in the name of the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, who lives and reigns with thee forever and ever.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. What is virtue? And what does it mean to be virtuous? Is being a good person the same as being virtuous? Join Deacon Harold Burke Sivers and Father Brian Milady as they examine why our souls must be developed by the four cardinal virtues in a five-part mini-series. So just because you're helpful to someone else on one level, but you're not on another, doesn't mean that you're a virtuous person. Learn how to combat the culture of indifference in grace-filled living here on the Global Catholic Network, EWTN. Hi, I'm Doug Keck, inviting you to join me next time when our great friend Father Brian Milady is our guest author. His book, St. Thomas Aquinas, Rescues Modern Psychology. Most people, if you ask them why it's good that they exist, they'll say because they did this and did that and did this and did that. Oh, the reason it's good that we exist is because we're willed at the hands of a loving creator. That's Father Brian Milady next time on Bookmark. Hi, I'm Marcus Grodi, and I'll be at the EWTN Family Celebration in Phoenix. I'll see you there. Make your plans now to attend the EWTN Family Celebration October 1st at the Phoenix Convention Center in Phoenix, Arizona. Find out how you can be a part at EWTN.com slash Family Celebration. EWTN. Live Truth. Live Catholic. Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer. Today we pray for the deceased. Heavenly Father, the lasting hope of all who believe, we trust in your goodness. We pray for our loved ones who have died. We pray too for all those who helped us during their lives our friends, our teachers, clergy, religious, and all of our benefactors who have died. Grant them eternal rest, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through your mercy, rest in peace. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. Do this in memory of me. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. And my thoughts and my words have done what I have failed to do. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Pardon the faults of your servants, we pray, O Lord, that we who cannot please you by our own deeds may be saved through the intercession of the mother of your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam, had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten, then, from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head, while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve, because she became the mother of all the living. Verbum Domini. You are the highest honor of our race. You are the highest honor of our race. Blessed are you, daughter, by the Most High God, above all the women on earth, and blessed be the Lord God, the Creator of heaven and earth. You, you are, are the, the highest, highest honor of our race. Your deed of hope will never be forgotten by those who tell of the might of God. You are the highest Dominus Fabiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, 
Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Verbum do hobini. Today we celebrate the feast of the dedication of Saint Mary Major. This is a beautiful and grand church in Rome. It's one of the four major basilicas in Rome. We have St. Peter, St. John Lateran, St. Paul outside the wall, and St. Mary Major. It was first, the first structure was constructed after the Council of Ephesus in 431, which Ephesus is in modern day uh, Turkey. And at Ephesus, we had the first Marian dogma proclaimed that she is the mother of God. <clears throat> and this church, the oldest in the West, dedicated to the honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, was honoring her uh, in this, under this title. So Ephesus, the council was in 431, but saints, doctors of the church, before this time, was using the title already. Saint Hippolytus uses the title in the early 200s. The Subtuum prayer, the oldest prayer we have to the Blessed Mother, we fly to thy patri protection or patronage, O Holy Mother of God. That was from the third century. Origen used the title in the third century and other writers of the Alexandrian school. Saint Athanasius in 360, Saint Cyril of Jerusalem in the fourth century, Saint Ambrose, Saint Augustine and others use this title as well. It's protecting Jesus's divinity. It's protecting his incarnation. We see in the Annunciation scene that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, what is conceived in her is by the power of the Holy Spirit that she is the ever Virgin Mary, intending to remain a virgin, we're told. She asks, how shall this come about? How, what's the manner of this? How is this to happen? because she intends to remain a virgin. So it's the work of the Holy Spirit overshadowing her. She conceives in her womb by the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the child born of her will be called the Son of God. And early church councils gave us dogmas and definitions for us in order to understand who Jesus is. These Marian doctrines are protecting the identity of Christ, that he is, as the earlier councils proclaimed, he is the second person of the Trinity, the Word, that the Word truly became flesh, the incarnation, that he's truly man and truly God. At the time of Ephesus, there were different heresies in the early church that saw the material world as evil, and consequently God would not assume the material, would not assume human nature. Nestorius did not want to acknowledge that God himself suffered in the flesh. And this threatens the incarnation and the redemption. The very manner in which 
Jesus redeems us is threatened when we believe that the material world's evil and that God could not assume that assume our human nature. So we see in Ephesus in 431, she's called the Holy Virgin Mother of God, Theotokos, God-bearer, that the word was united uh, to human flesh from the moment of his conception in the womb of the Virgin Mary. And the Council of Chalcedon in 451 taught that the, the divine and human natures in Christ remain without confusion or change, without division or separation. Not two natures, human and divine, combining to make some new nature. He's truly human, he's truly divine. He's not simply appearing as a man, not as a man that maybe is anointed by the Holy Spirit at some later point, but Chalcedon said in a letter of St. Leo that the great, that he is, that the word is one person and the two natures that we see in Christ, these two natures come together in one person, a divine person, that Jesus is a divine person with a human nature and divine nature. And mothers are mothers of persons. That's the, the linkage, the phrase, that's what it turns upon. My mother is not the mother of just my human nature. She's the mother. The scripture tells us of a woman in the fullness of time, not as though this body came from heaven through the Blessed Virgin Mary, but he assumed human flesh in the womb of the Virgin. And the church fathers would say that what was not assumed was not redeemed. So our nature was assumed by the word and redeemed, transformed, and redemption divinized, that we're joined to the divine nature, that we are truly transformed, become, becomes new uh, creations in Christ. And the church, too, because Mary is a type, a prefigurement of the church, and the church herself as a virgin and mother, that the Holy Spirit is working through her to bring this divine life today to us in the sacraments, in the proclaiming of the gospel. We have we come to faith, receive the sacraments of baptism, confirmation of the Eucharist, and this new life is born in us. Jesus is born in us in a sense, we could say, that we share in the divine nature in the womb of the church. Mary is the prefigurement, the type, the exemplar of the church, we could say even the church in person. So this, this miracle and this transformation, this gift, this overshadowing the Holy Spirit continues today in the church at our, at our Blessed Mother's intercession for us. So the birth of flesh reveals human nature in Mary and the birth from a virgin as a proof of divine power, because we uphold that teaching of her as well, that she is the ever virgin, as the Holy Spirit doing this work. So what is proper to both characters, to the character of both natures was maintained and came together in a single person, this was Chalcedon's teaching, that lowliness by majesty, weakness by strength, mortality by each other. The same way true man, the letter of Pope Leo the Great that was used at Chalcedon. As the word does not lose its glory, which is equal to that of the Father, so neither does the flesh leave the nature of its kind behind. We must say this again and again, one and the same is truly Son of God and truly Son of Man. So we say that union, as I said, happens in the person of Christ. He's a divine person. He's not a human person anointed by the Holy Spirit. He's not a mixture of the divine and human, but it's joined and united together in the person of Christ, in the person of the Word. We see in the first reading today the account of the fall, and it's fitting that as Adam and Eve were there at the head of the human race, 
we have at the head of a new humanity, a transformed humanity, we have Jesus and Mary. Jesus, the new Adam, Mary, the new Eve. Paul refers to him as the second Adam. Church fathers refer to Eve, to Mary as the new Eve. And it's quite striking at the, at the end of this passage of the account of the fall, we're told that the man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all the living. There's some play in the Hebrew of the word Eve and, and living. But all of humanity, right, is contained in Adam and Eve. It's, it, they're the, the head of the human race. And now we see that Mary becomes the true mother of all the living. Where Eve fell into sin and Adam, and they brought death. We see this sin, evil, suffering, death entered the world. We see through Jesus and Mary this new life, this transformation that heaven is open for us, that we are to be joined and share in the very divine nature. Our human nature, our lowly nature is lifted up, is transformed. We're given sanctifying grace. We're given the Holy Spirit that we can live and act by that spirit, be guided by the spirit, strengthened by the spirit, do the works of the spirit, have the fruits of the spirit in us, joy and peace, who can be part of his kingdom, who can prepare the way for that kingdom, that the transformation of the world is underway in that kingdom. It's destined to be fulfilled in his second coming and offered to his heavenly father. So this, this first account, we see the utter destruction of sin, that death entered the world. But in Jesus and Mary, we see new life. That's our hope. That's our hope, this new life that is given to us in the womb of the church, in our sacraments, in our proclamation of the gospel, in the fellowship of believers, the communion of saints. We need to pray and ask Mary's intercession for this renewal, this transformation. She's the mediatrix of all graces. She brings us these gifts one for us by Christ. She helps us to hold on to that grace that we're given, that precious joy of salvation that we're given. She helps us to hold on to that. We need our prayers to persevere. And the good news is that she loves us like a real mother. She pays attention, sees our every difficulty, like at the wedding feast of Cana, where she intercedes for the couple. She stands at the foot of the cross, at the foot of our cross and difficulties and sufferings. She misses nothing. If we entrust ourselves to her, she brings us these incredible gifts that are so needed in a fallen world and our own struggle with sin. She loves us tenderly like a mother pays attention to everything about our life, hears our every plea. And we'd be faithful to the great, great gifts that we have been given to pray and ask for her help and intercession this day. We trust in Mary's fidelity, we lean on her strength, and we ask her kind intercession as we offer God our prayers and petitions. For the church, that like the seed that fell on rich soil, we may take the time to hear and understand God's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our Pope and the bishops, that they will encourage us to look on the media as a potentially great channel for the spread of the gospel message. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who find it hard to forgive, that God's healing grace may enter their hearts. 
We pray to the Lord. For the gentle repose of those who have died, that in mercy God may welcome them into heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we thank you for giving us Mary to be our queen and our mother. She who is the first and most perfect disciple of your son teaches us how to follow in his footsteps with undivided hearts. Through her intercession, may we persevere unto death along the path of holiness. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, as we rejoice in commemorating the mother of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may advance towards eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus Bobiscum, Sursum Corda. Sagamus Domino Deo Nostro. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the feast day of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived her only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. So 
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, est Deo Patri Omnipotenti, et unitate spirite tu sancti, Omnis honor et gloria, per omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. 
Precepti salitaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater noster, qui es in celis, sanctifice tu. Quasimus Domini ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut ope misericordiae tu adiuti, et efficato simus semper liberti, et ab omni perturbatione secordi, expectantes viatum spem, et eventum salvatoris nostri, Iesu Christi. Jesu Christe, quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem iam do vobis, ne despicias peccata nostra set fidem ecclesiae tuae, eam quae secundum voluntatum tuam, pacificare acquardonare digneris, qui vivis et regnas in secula seculo ordum. Pax Domini sed semper vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but I say the word, and my soul shall be. All generations will call me blessed. 
for God has looked on his lowly handmaid. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me, and bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee for ever and ever. Amen.
renewed with this heavenly food, we humbly implore you, Lord, that having received your Son, born of the tender virgin, under sacramental signs, we may profess him in words and hold fast to him in deeds, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dominus Fobiscum. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Ite for vocations, God our Father, who wills that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of your truth. We beg you to send laborers into your harvest and grant them grace to speak your word with all boldness, so that your word may spread and be glorified. 
and all nations may know you, the only God, and him whom you have sent, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of the Americas, Mary, Mother of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word, pray for us. Many today are suffering from addictions of various forms, substance abuse, eating disorders, pornography, and others. One who struggles with compulsion experiences being held by chains they cannot break, as much as they may try over and over again. Psalm 107 is a powerful cry of trust in God to break those chains. So for those of you who are bound by chains of addiction, and for those we know who are fighting for freedom, let us pray Psalm 107. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men, for he satisfies the thirsty soul, and the hungry he fills with good things. Some dwelt in darkness and the shadow of death, prisoners in misery and chains, having rebelled against the words of God, and spurn the plan of the Most High. He humbled their heart with toil. They stumbled, there was no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress. He led them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains to pieces. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men. For he burst the gates of bronze and cuts through the iron bars. Some fell sick on account of their sins and were afflicted on account of their guilt. They had a loathing for every food. They drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their need and he rescued them from their distress. He sent forth his word to heal them and save their life from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy his wonders for the children of men. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanks and tell of his deeds with rejoicing. Lord Jesus, you came to save us from sin and death. You are the word sent to heal us, to deliver us, to liberate us, to rescue us and to free us. Save us for we are perishing. Jesus, we cry to you and place all of our trust in you, and we shall not hope in vain. Amen. Mother of mercy and love, blessed Virgin Mary, I am a poor and unworthy sinner, and I turn to you in confidence and love. You stood by your Son as he hung dying on the cross. Stand also by me, a poor sinner, and by all the priests who are offering Mass today throughout the entire Church. Help us to offer a perfect and acceptable sacrifice in the sight of the Holy and Undivided Trinity, our Most High God. Amen. Hi, I'm Father Mitch Paquin. I'm going to be at the EWTN Family Celebration in Phoenix, Arizona. Hope to see you there. Make your plans now to attend the EWTN Family Celebration October 1st at the Phoenix Convention Center in Phoenix, Arizona. Find out how you can be a part at EWTN.com slash Family Celebration. Have you ever heard someone say, we should not blame people for whatever bad things they do. We should not judge them for their faults. We should be kind and merciful. Well, of course we should be kind and merciful. However, it's not merciful to say that we should not blame them for the sins that they commit. As G.K. Chesterton says, blame is actually a compliment. 
It's a compliment because it's an appeal to a man's soul. When we call a man a coward, we are in so doing asking how he can be a coward when he could be a hero. When we rebuke a man for being a sinner, we imply that he has the potential of being a saint. Spend more time with the Apostle of Common Sense. Visit Chesterton.org for more information and go to EWTNRC.com to discover more books and programs written and inspired by G.K. Chesterton. The Holy Father's prayer intention for the month of August is small businesses. We pray for small and medium-sized businesses. In the midst of economic and social crisis, may they find ways to continue operating and serving their communities. EWTN. Live Truth. Live Catholic. EWTN invites you to join us in this rosary as we pray for peace in Ukraine. Our diocese here in Birmingham, Alabama, as part of the Eucharistic Revival of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, is praying for vocations to the diocesan priesthood and a special novena to St. John Marie Vianney, patron of priests. For we cannot have the Eucharist without priests. We are joining this initiative and in praying for our diocese, but also invite all of you who are with us in various dioceses throughout the world to pray for vocations to the diocese and priesthood for your own diocese. We are certain that the Lord will not leave us without priests to feed us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need thy mercy. 
The first sorrowful mystery, the agony of Jesus in the garden. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need thy Second sorrowful mystery, the scourging at the pillar. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now we are our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from our fires of hell, lead all souls to hell, especially those who are most in need of our sins. Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, 
miracle of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need of thy mercy. mystery Jesus carries his cross. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven especially those who most need them.
ministry of the crucifixion. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in the most need of heaven. the Holy Mother of God, for the intentions of the Holy Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Mary, conceived without sin. Pray for us, sin. Day seven of the novena to St. John to the Curie of ours. St. John Vianney said, See, my children, if we really wish to be saved, we must determine once and for all to labor in earnest for our salvation. Our soul is like a garden in which the weeds are ever ready to choke the good plants and flowers that have been sown in it. A holy priest of ours, the infam infamous attacks of the devil which you had to suffer with the trials which disheartened you by fatigue would not make you give up the sublime task of converting souls. The devil came to you for many years to disturb your short rest, but you won because of mortification and prayers. Powerful protector, you know the tempter's desire to harm my baptized and believing soul. He would have me sin by rejecting the holy sacraments and the life of virtue. But good saint of ours, dispel from me the traces of the enemy. Together, almost holy Saint John Vene, you are a priest who is outstanding in pastoral zeal. May priests today be filled with that zeal, faithful to their calling, refreshed in their labors by the Holy Spirit, supported by their fellow workers, and appreciated by those whose lives they touch. Dear Cure of ours, pray for us, but especially for all priests, holy priests of ours, I have confidence in your intercession. Pray for me during this novena, and especially for an increase of the priest. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Live Truth, Live Catholic, with trusted series, features, and specials from EWTN Home Video. The EWTN Home Video highlight for August is They Might Be Saints, Rhoda Wise. Among the healing miracles of this stigmatic and mystic was the cure of 19-year-old Rita Rizzo, the girl who became EWTN's Mother Angelica. I believe Rhoda said, I want you to pray in Novena. And uh, Mother did. It was the first time she really felt um, God's touch upon her. At the end of nine days of prayer, Rita's stomach condition suddenly disappeared. She eventually went on to become a nun 
and then the foundress of EWTN. Order your DVD at EWTNRC.com, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, or call 1-800-854-6316. Greg Popcheck. I love being able to hear those people sharing their stories and, and seeing how they match with my own stories, my own life, uh, and it makes me think about things that, that maybe I wouldn't have thought of before or think about things in a way that I might not have considered before. And I'm really grateful for the opportunity that Catholic Radio gives me to just expand my view of how my faith applies to the world. The leading Catholic voices are on EWTN Radio. EWTN. Live Truth. Live Catholic. Did one of the greatest writers of history use his art to battle a tyrannical emperor in his own time? Author and scholar Claire Asquith explores that possibility in her latest book, Shakespeare and the Resistance. Later, Wall Street Journal book critic and author of The Enchanted Hour, Megan Cox Gurdon will tell us how reading aloud helps build deeper bonds with our families. And finally, we'll get story ended with New York Times bestselling author Marcus Zusek. The World Over begins right now. From Washington, D.C., Raymond Arroyo. A warm welcome to all of you joining us in the United States and the world over. Claire Asquith, Megan Cox Gurdon, and Marcus Susak are all straight ahead. If you'd like to comment on tonight's show, send us a tweet. We're Raymond Arroyo. Now I want to get right to it. William Shakespeare is regarded as the greatest playwright of all times. His plays and poems have deeply influenced cultures all over the world. My next guest is a noted Shakespeare scholar. Her 2005 book, Shadow Play, examined the religious and political messages encoded in the Bard's body of work. Well, in her latest book, Shakespeare and the Resistance, she focuses on two mostly ignored Shakespeare poems, poems which the Bard may have used to address the religious and political upheaval in England at the time. Here's my exclusive interview with Claire Asquith. What I loved about reading this, uh, it debunked the myth of Elizabeth Serene, which we have her a long tale on. And the narrative is she was this wonderful queen. She allowed, she was a tolerant queen. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case. Less and less so as her reign continued. Uh, and the tyranny, which is what people began to call it at the end, um, was operated not by the Queen directly, mm -hmm. but by her very, very expert Privy Council and advisers, and particularly William Cecil Lord Burley, mm. who the more you read Shakespeare and his contemporaries, Spencer, the more you realize they saw him as the demon. So yes, he operated under the glamorous guise of Elizabeth, mm -hmm. a tighter and tighter police state, and I think that's what scholars recognized now. A police mm. state. Mm. Yeah. Yes. No, well, well, you see the Tower of London, and I mean, yes. <laughs> it, was a, it was a pretty <laughs> cruel place. And you can't get past the, the scrawlings. I've seen them myself on the wall, the etchings on the wall, uh, uh, you know, Jesuit insignia, uh, uh, prayers, uh, crosses, all sorts of Catholic, very Catholic references, which tell us something further. What, how does the Catholic dimension fit in to not only the story of Elizabethan England, but more particularly into the life and background of William Shakespeare. Mm. Henry VIII is where it began, mm -hmm. and you can see Shakespeare taking that deep breath with his second narrative poem. He, he tries to go back, how did we get into this situation? Mm. How did it all start? And it started, of course, when Henry VIII took over the Church of England in England and, and, and said he, the king, was head of the church. Mm. And in order to do that, he had to construct a synthetic religion, 
mm. not Lutheran, because Luther laughed at the right. idea of a monarch being head of the church, mm -hmm. and not Catholic, because of course the Pope would not accept a monarch being head of the church. Mm. So this was thought of at the time as a third religion. Mm. And uh, as time went on, with its daughter particularly, uh, in order to establish loyalty to this new church, an oath was established, the Oath of Supremacy, mm -hmm. whereby everybody who wanted any sort of public job of any kind had to swear allegiance to the monarch as head of the church. Mm -hmm. Now, Catholics couldn't do that in good conscience. Reformers couldn't do that in good conscience. So you begin to have a perjured country. Everybody mm -hmm. secretly practicing or believing something which openly they didn't say. Right. Now, if Catholics were a much bigger number than historians up to now have, have recognized. Um, when Queen Elizabeth's successor came to the throne, uh, he, James I, had to say, I am going to give toleration to Catholics. And that shows what a huge, important, silent, dangerous, possibly majority they were. Mm. As for Shakespeare's family, like if you look at any family at that time, mm -hmm. they were enmeshed deeply in this conflict. Mm -hmm. um, his father was had up for recusancy, that is not attending the state church. Right. Nobody really knows why. Mm. Could have been for debt. But he was penalized. They're, he they're, was penalized. Mm -hmm. He had to he had to pay. And he that's twenty pounds a month you had to pay for not attending wow. the state church, which was the equivalent of a year's salary for a grammar school teacher. Wow. So you just couldn't do it. Uh -huh. you, know, you had to be a hero. I mean, mm. there were particularly Catholics, as we know, who mm. were heroes at this time. Mm -hmm. But most people, Raymond, I don't know about you, but certainly me, we would have caved in and paid lip mm. service mm. to this increasingly tight regime. Yeah. Um, but Shakespeare had a tragic um, case in his own family, and a typical one. Mm. Uh, John Somerville, his cousin, uh, lost it completely. He mm. was restricted oh, as yeah. a young man, and he galloped to London with a gun saying, I'm going to kill the Queen. And the mm. result of that was not only he died in the tower, oh. but the head of Shakespeare's mother's family, the Edward Arden's. Arden, yes, mm. he was executed. Uh, while you mentioned Shakespeare's family and his upbringing, mm. I want to show people, uh, several years ago, you and I went to Stratford-on-Avon, yes. and mm. we talked about the training of this boy from yes. this little hamlet far from London, and how that training, though it seems parochial, really set the stage for the entire world to look in, not only yeah. on this history of England at the time, but into the hearts of humanity. Take a look at this. They were called grammar schools not for nothing. They really did learn grammar, rhetoric, how to use language. Later on, he clearly had the run of a great man's library, and a lot more of his later education could come from that. He could have gone to university, I think. Mm -hmm. But what's very interesting about Stratford Grammar School is that the teachers were chosen and paid for by the guild. The guild, which Shakespeare's father eventually became chief of, became bailiff. The six teachers who were there covering Shakespeare's period, out of those six, four had clear Catholic sympathies. At a time when the government was cracking down on this, one of Shakespeare's teachers, Simon Hunt, taught Shakespeare when he was nine. Two years later, he went off to Dowie and he became a Jesuit priest. And so it shows one thing that people have realized, that Shakespeare was educated in the humanist way that is to see allegory and depth and many layers of meaning in texts. What the government and what the Puritans wanted was literal reading. And what I love about this new book is it really is not only the history of this period,